Hello everyone, welcome to Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, a brand new Let's Play. I'm going to be playing this game with a fun self-imposed challenge, one of the most fun classic Fire Emblems in the history of Fire Emblem, in the history of games maybe even, and of course I'll be joined as usual by the one and only original Raisins. How are you doing? I'm doing well today. Doing. I'm really excited because first off, I love Path of Radiance. Alright, I know I say that about every Fire Emblem game, and it's true. But like, I do love Path of Radiance. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a very fun one. I think it's a good sandbox for experimenting with some challenge runs. Like, eight, eight and nine are always my favorite. Whenever I have a new challenge run, it's like, let me experiment one of these two. Absolutely. So, I think it'll be fun to bring it out on this one. Uh, but we are playing a special challenge run today, right? Yeah, we sure are. Well, we'll go over it when we set up the options menu. Funnily enough, uh, but let's go yeah. over the more basic things, right? So, we're playing a new game. Uh, so, on this file, playing on difficult mode, which. For English players, is uh, honestly still one of the easier Fire Emblems overall, which is why a self-imposed challenge will be so fun on it. So that's why we're playing difficult here. Uh, Japanese version has Maniac Mode, which is definitely harder, but also, I think, less fun to play. So we're going to go with difficult here. And uh, this you might not see if you haven't played Path of Radiance before, because it's only available in New Game Plus, basically. We've already cleared the game once. Uh, you can have your level ups be fixed. Uh, I'm going to keep them random, though. Uh, fix is fun, but random just means it's as usual. Ran level ups are random. Like I can't make it more complicated than that. Uh, it's the same as what you're used to with other Fire Emblem games. I will say fixed growths is an interesting thing, and there's like some nuances to it. Um, if you want to play it, absolutely give it a go. Because yeah. I know there's people like, oh, what if Fire Emblem didn't have random level ups? Where Guys, Path like? of Radiance. Just you play it. Enough. It's true. Mm -hmm. I was going with most of the story, but I think this is a this is a funny cutscene. At least for the oh. for the voice acting. Oh, we, oh we, look we, at can, all. we can we can we can fly throughout. Uh, yeah. What was it gonna say? Anyway, Ike, 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 Ike. Dad. Ike. Oh, missed. Missed and Rolf show the voice actor, right? Wait, really? I think so. I, I can and believe it. Down, they do. This sounds like one of those facts that someone tells you, and you're like, "Oh, yeah, that, that's true. That's true. I know that. It's actually, not true, but oh, no. I like can I see it. True. I see it. I don't know if Rolf has any lines in Path of Radiance, though. Uh, Are you ready, Don? He has the very famous. Yes. Yeah, I don't. I think it's the same guy. Mm -hmm. This is. Is this, is this what plus? you see when you get knocked out by a sword? Did I just not watch this in a while? I don't remember this at all. I only remember Ike. Mm -hmm. What the? He had like a post-it note in his head. What the heck? <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, <laughs> get Vaughn from Mist. Hmm. Yes. Don't forget Vaughn. Here are the rules. <laughs> yeah. Do not forget to Vaughn. Oh, right, she has, a, she has that song, that's right. Missed. That song. Ah, oh, you're up. About time. <laughs> he didn't answer the question, though. Yeah, I, I haven't played Path of Radiance in a while, but every time I come back to it, I like it. It's not a game I've played the most, like, not even close, but <laughs> it sure is good. Yeah, it's I think time. every time I play it with a new twist, it's like, ah, yeah, this game's really fun. Yes. And then, but the the issue though is that like you can't just play Path of Radiance. <laughs> this is correct. Like you get to the end, it's like, well, you we gotta play Radiant Dawn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Sure. So, shall we talk about what we're doing? Yes. What are we doing, Raisins? We're playing Ignorance. Is that what it's called? We're playing the Ignorance yes. run. And you're the That's master right. of Ignorance, right? Uh, yeah, well, I came up with it. I actually came up with it uh, on the bus going to school one day. The entire concept uh, of ignorance? Well, that, too. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was really good at it, too. I still don't really know where it came from, but no, no. The ignorance run is uh, it's a run I came up with uh, actually as a kid on the bus going to school one day. I think I was playing some FE8, and I opened up the options menu. And in the options menu, let's go ahead and open it up. Uh, I saw, let's go down to, like, unit window. Uh, right? Yeah. Uh, there it is. Unit window. So that's the thing where, like, when you mouse over a unit, it tells you their HP. And I saw you could turn it off. And I was like, Ooh. why the hell would you want to do that? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. And here we are. <laughs> and here we are. So, like, yeah. like, let's go ahead and turn it off real quick and yeah. see. This thing. Ooh, yeah. I, I was like, why, the, why, would you, yeah, why would you want to do that? And then I saw, uh, what else was there? Options. Was it combat window? Uh, yeah, probably. That's like, that's what cop up if you do this, I think. You do this one time. 
Yeah, the forecast. Yes. And I saw, like, everyone knows there's a simple and the detailed. I think the detailed gives you, like, the FE4 style yeah. one where it shows you. I'm not even going to show it because I hate it. <laughs> yeah, everyone uses like, this. Yeah, everyone uses this. Uh, but I saw you could turn that off, and I was like, why the heck would you want to do that, too? And I was like, that sounds stupid. Why would you want to do that? And I think, like, approximately two minutes later, I was like, wait a sec. What if I turn it off? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. What if I do? I can do this, and I won't know what's going yeah. on. That seems like fun. Seems like I think fun. we also yeah, can't also... do this. Yeah, we can't do that. Okay, so we're not checking anything. All right, seems fun to me. Yeah. Not check anything. Oh, there's a couple other things to do too. Yeah, okay. uh, actually, I sent it to you in your DMs. Let me scroll up a bit because, to be honest, I've forgotten the path of radiance. Here it is. Okay, so the unit window's got to be off. The combat window's got to be off, and terrain goal's got to be off. Uh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. it's gonna be max fast. Normal seems fine here. Oh yeah, the other stuff too. Uh, I don't want help window. I don't want guide window. Everything else I'm pretty sure with, uh, Auto and turn. I'll leave off. Auto cursor off. I think. Yeah. I have to auto cursor off. He's a pro. I don't actually know what's faster in this game. I usually have it off though. I don't know. Yeah. Just have on. Seems like fun to have. All right. Seems good. So basically, go. the concept of ignorance is like you get as little information as possible, but you have to make decisions anyway because it's a strategic game. So just memorize your HP bar amount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just no memorize it. Yeah. Oh, and um, usually when I play it, I do an Iron Man run type as well. Mm -hmm. I just go through it. And I was actually shocked like how fast the game progresses, because at least when I was a kid, well, it took up a lot of time and Fire Emblem was doing math and resetting the game when I died, and this removed both of them. Yes, so. <laughs> that's true. I'm You're not going to be doing full Iron Man, uh, but I will probably not reset unless my I get a game over. And I say probably to give myself an out, but I told Raisins I'm not going to reset, and I'm going to try to stick to it. He'll try to keep me to it, because I love resetting for units if they die, or, or loading a save state, but I'm going to try not to do it, and we'll see if we can get away with it. Yeah. yeah, and the point of this, of course, is to, you know, sort of be an Iron Man that helps contrive some funny, like, situations or deaths or uncertain moments for your units. Yes. Or otherwise things that you're not as familiar with. Mm-hmm. It's going to be some funny ways to uh, get around these, these little restrictions. Uh, before we dive in, though, there is one more thing we have to do, uh, which is... I'm sorry, we got to check a stat screen one time for each character, because, of course, we are doing unit analysis for Path of Radiance. So ah, I see. Go. So, one time for each character. I yes. guess that's fine. Yeah. I guess that's fine. Yeah, just one time. Just one time. Mm -hmm. uh, now, last time we played Thracia, and Raisins didn't know all the characters because he hadn't played the full game, but this is a game you've played many times, so I'm sure we both have a lot to say on all these uh, units. I have done oh, yeah. multiple tier lists of um, FE9 characters in the past, like I've done the big tier list, I've done an FE9 mm -hmm. tier list review with three parts, uh, so some of this might sound familiar, but of course there's going to be a little twist with the whole ignorance thing where, you know, that might shake things up a little bit in how we use these characters. Uh, I think Ike is an right. actually, actually, excellent example of that, because normally I use Ike whenever convenient and I find him like serviceable. Uh, obviously he has his flaws in the context of this game, he doesn't have the greatest of bulk early on, he doesn't have the greatest damage outputs. He doubles Axe users, but not a whole lot of other things. I guess Lance users, but doesn't do much damage to those. Uh, he gets a personal sword later on that does some more damage, the, the Regal Sword, uh, which is like double effective against cavalry and armor knights, which is okay. Uh, but. One wild thing about Ike that I'm a little bit worried about is, first of all, he gives the game over if he dies, so if I'm going to be careful with anyone, it's going to have to be Ike, but I do want to train him, and I'm only going to have limited Vex to compensate for him not getting Vex in the combat, or getting combat XP. So, I'm a little bit worried about that. And also the fact that Ike's damage output, I feel like whenever I play Path of Radiance, I'm always surprised, uh, either positively or negatively, by Ike's uh, combat forecast. Usually I'm underwhelmed by what I see. I'm like, yeah, I can probably take on this low HP soldier and he does like 2 times 2 to 5 HP. I'm like, well, damn, like, that could have been better, you know? So I'm a little bit worried about Ike, uh, but I'm going to try to use him because uh, the game sort of forces you into it. Uh, if only through the, la the last boss fight, but also like several other points. It's much convenient to have a trained Ike compared to not, but I'm a little bit afraid. How did you tackle this, Raisins? So in an Iron Man, I totally agree. Where, like Ike, he, he he's not a very impressive lord, at least in Path of Radiance, in early game or in later game. However, with a lot of the with a lot of the Iron Man runs I do, usually what I do is I just funnel a bunch of XP into Ike at the start, and I just kind of use that as a cushion for the rest of the early game, right? Just if you give him a heap of stats all at once, that's usually enough to sustain him for a while. Or at the very least, get him over like this awkward 19 HP, this awkward 5 defense. Like, get him to a point where he's not going to get doubled by people. And 
he, he's got enough uh, physical bulk to really like withstand multiple rounds of combat. And also just to be careful with putting him near enemy units with Kanto, especially in the early game, mm -hmm. especially in Iron Man, just because like that's that that's the one time where you could actually end up fighting way too many units that you're not prepared for. I know exactly one place where I'm definitely going to be tempted to do that, but I want to to give him the XP. And it's going to be hard to yeah. hold back on it. <laughs> I mean, we'll we'll have Bex by then too. Yeah, that's so. True. Furthermore, I should ask you uh, when we're evaluating these units, uh, two things. First off, it's just in like a casual playthrough on hard mode, or are we talking about like in the ignorance playthrough on hard mode? How we should be evaluating them? Oh, evaluating. I mean, kind of like what we're we talking did. about these units. Kind of like what we just did. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. We just did absolutely so, perfect. Never change a thing. Uh, well, well, I don't. Want, I don't want that guy in the comments to be like, but on maniac mode. Oh, maniac Here mode. It's just like, eh. like we're. We're, we're addressing this to hard mode, right? If you're playing on Maniac mode, you know what you're doing. I trust your, your judgment. Right, right. Cool. I trust. I don't have to you tell know? you anything no, if okay. you're willing to play this game on Maniac mode. <laughs> yeah, no, sounds good. All right, anything to add before we exit this stat screen and we'll never look at I like stats again until we get Bix or something. Or, or level ups. Level yeah. ups on this check chats, I guess. Never once. I think, so, th this is just going to be kind of like a blanket statement for all of our evaluations of Path of Radiance. I think, should we should we talk about Bex? Just very briefly, you and I. I mean, maybe when, when we get we, it. We've maybe? already spent a lot of time in this menu, you know? Like, yeah. When we, when we get it, maybe we can talk about Bex? Because I know, think it's, so. It's going to be like, what, eight chapters before we get it? Mm -hmm. It's, well, the reason I kind of wanted to introduce it now is because it's a big concept in Path of Radiance. And it really does sort of define how strong certain units are. The reason I bring it up is because I don't want to repeat every time we have a unit, like, if you give them a bunch of Bex, then they're going to do great, because that's true for pretty much every unit. True. Uh, so when we talk about a unit, if if we're kind of downplaying their abilities, it's usually because uh, investing Bex into them would mean that you're not investing Bex into a different unit that could have possibly been using it better. So, you know, just know that if we say, if, if we say some bad things about your favorite unit, and you go quickly to the comment section saying like, oh, if you give them Bex, they're great. You're right too. If you give them Bex, they're great. That's true for everybody. We're kind of going, I think we're probably going to approach it in a slightly more critical competitive lens and say like, well, who's the best person to be using your Bex spawn or uh, what results are you foregoing if you use your Bex on this unit as opposed to a different one? Wow. So we're just, this, this should be like a helpful thing for probably the evaluation super cut. Oh, at yeah. the end that I know you're going to put together. Uh -huh. Just saying, like, guys, remember, <laughs> Bexp exists, it can make anyone good, but we're not going to we're not gonna repeat that every time we have a unit evaluation, I think. I think that is fair. Uh, in the context of Ike, I think one thing that hurts him a little bit with Bexp is he can't promote uh, from just Bexp him up, so he's going to be level 20 cap for a little bit uh, mm -hmm. as the game goes along. That will probably make him hard to snowball out of control to the point where he literally can't die. Uh, but it can be a good way to compensate for slacking off early game, but I, I do like the idea of making a cushion for him XP-wise to make sure that he doesn't uh, fall behind and actually keep up with the enemies. He also has an Earth affinity, which will be helpful if we support him with Oscar, for example, to make his, oh, yeah. his death less likely, although I don't want to rely on it. Uh, with that said, we have spent 15 minutes exactly not playing the game. Shall we play the game? Let's play the game. I'm exiting the stat menu right now. We can never look at it again. Here that's it. Also, the stat window you just saw, that I didn't show the raisins, but he knows it's there. Uh, that showed all the girls. That was made by my designer, Rin, and it's amazingly looking. So, thank you, Rin, for making it. Uh, let's beat up Boyd. I know it looks great. Let's beat up Boyd. Yeah. Great feature of this game. You can do animations, but you won't see the, the damage. Which is usually bad, <laughs> but you know, in this in this context, it works out pretty well. Usually bad. Let's see some of these beautiful animations. <laughs> I love them. They're goofy as hell. They're not my favorite, but I've grown I've grown attached to them a little bit. Uh, I'm mask cam practice. There you go, fast scan. There you go. I think you got it right. There we go. I got the fast scan back to Boyd. I made sure the camera moved around, moved around faster. We'll probably have a we we'll probably have a slow enemy face somewhere where we can have, where, where we can elaborate on that. <laughs> yeah. Probably That's won't be so <laughs> I missed it up. I know. That's the worst when like you hit A and then it hits enemy phase and immediately scrolls over. You're like, ah, I messed it up, didn't I? I messed it up. I didn't like, get the I speed one strat though. All right, get the volume. We'll probably have to use it. I think so. Yeah. That was the post-it note on our forehead side, right? Yes. All right. Here's Grill. I have no idea what his stats are, so hopefully it'll be all right. Yeah, we uh, did look it up before the bomb came. Yeah. <laughs> I think he doesn't ever attack you, so I think you just have to use a bomb here. Yeah, you, you have to. You gotta use you'll a bomb. Okay. You'll get whooped otherwise. Yeah. Okay. We have 13 HP now, so he's gonna do. I think he does six. I remember this part. I don't know all pathways. Oh, he didn't attack me. Okay. 
but I think I can live a hit now. And if not, content. If not. I actually haven't seen Grail's animations. Give it your all. <laughs> oh crap. Oh, He's wait. not even trying, bro. He's <laughs> not trying. He just like stood still and bopped him. To be fair, last time I tried, we were kind of like out cold for a bit. Yeah. You know? Get ready. Here I come. Mm. Okay. Ooh. We can we can do this. We have our trainer sword. We cannot miss him. We will not we have miss. our trainer sword. Our Pokemon yes. sword. Okay, let me let me show the map animations. Those are fun too. There you go. These are good. <laughs> Bonk. <laughs> it just like lightning swipes them. Dun, 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 all right. Dun. All right. Our first go. You can do oh, it. Oh, oh, all right, all right. We take okay. those. We take those. Not just, bad. Just don't suffer from success, Ike, and you'll be good. Oh, Glass good. cannon, Ike. We got res, though. We, we did get res. Remember, Gotta Ike has one res. Chapter. We're going to play another one, because uh, this one is really short, obviously. We're going to play uh, chapter one as well. That was about to be like a good episode, guys. But... Mm -hmm. It's been fun, guys. <laughs> Chats for right. one. The battle begins. It only just begun. Did it only... I don't think there's a cutscene here or anything. I think it's just like safe to skip here. If there is, well, you can watch cutscenes on YouTube, guys. That's true. There was dialogue. All right. Hey, look, it's more units. We can look at the hey. screens once. Uh, once. Let me see. Who for? Well, here. let's do. Oh, to deployment order. You won't. Deployment order. I know. Yeah. I know what deployment order is. Uh, I feel like I'll switch to Ike and then the next unit. I guess. L. All stuff and different uh, for, my, for my thing. Hello. Ooh, I, I cheated. Know. Oh no. Oh no. Illegal. I can't do it. I don't know I can't what to switch. I don't know what the button is. Why? I don't know. What the, I don't know. Okay. Don't That's know it. This is how we're playing. Yeah, this, this is how <laughs> we're playing. This is how we're playing. This is how we're playing. I actually can't. Come on, put it back. Game, put it back. Put it back. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> what did we do? Oh. <laughs> did we do? I moved my, my red camera stick, but it's not letting me move back. Uh. So you have like. Oh, you had like right camera stick right bound, but not right camera stick left bound. Probably. Let me fix that. On your oh, on your Nintendo PC. <laughs> I can do this now. <laughs> that wasn't me not knowing my controls. That was that was the dolphin's fault. I, I blame the dolphin. All right, we're doing dolphin. We're, we're doing we're doing Titania first. I've decided. Okay, we're doing Titania, Titania first. That's fair. Uh, get used to the buttons here. Here we go. That's Titania. There you uh, go. I I think the default phrase for this playthrough is going to be I don't know, so let's just use Titania. And that's gonna be the repeat <laughs> for like the first eight chapters. If I'm ever super unsure on anything, especially kind of like with units like Ike and Boyd, when I'm not sure exactly what they're gonna do, I'd rather just have Titania go in front and get them out of the way. That introduces another big problem, which is what if Titania actually dies? <laughs> which I think can happen if you go really overboard. In the early game it shouldn't be a big problem because Titania is uh, one of the best combat units in the entire series, at least for the first ten or so chapters. She is. Really overleveled because she starts off as a paladin rather than a cavalier, and she has the stats to match it roughly. Uh, maybe not as good as like a trained paladin would be at this level, but her growths are also super amazing as you can see on the side. So she'll keep up well and do that for pretty much the first half of the game. After that, she gets a little bit worse, relatively speaking, but she's still one of your better units uh, at that point. Uh, just no longer like the absolute best, but like one of the best. Never really falls off completely, but always really, really powerful using axes as well as lances, um, any axe you want and almost any lance you want. Uh, counter, not super relevant in my opinion, uh, but it's funny when it activates so it still uh, produces some good laughs every now and then. Uh, oh, yeah. Also super canto in this game, being able to move after attacking in addition to you know trading, rescuing, dropping, all these other actions you can do, healing, uh, also super helpful. Uh, yeah, great crutch unit, kinda, kinda use this a lot. And I know you called her a crutch unit, but you shouldn't feel bad about using Titania in the game. Like, like she's kind of she's kind of fun to use. You just bop them with the Steel Axe. You bop them with the Iron Axe. I think there's some nuance to that, but I, I think with Iron Axe we should be pretty much fine this whole time. Uh, you mentioned earlier that her stats are pretty like low compared to what a level one Paladin should be, and I think a part of that is because like Intellius especially, or rather in Path of Radiance and in Radiant Dawn this is a bit different. Uh, but in Path of Radiance, it's pretty common to get a unit to level 20 before promoting them. So, like, yeah. there, are, there are a few Master Seals in the game that you can use to promote them early. And maybe there are a few units whom we will promote early with Master Seals, uh, just to show it off. But it's not that hard and also not that uncommon to just get a unit to 20. 
and Path of Radiance. And then you level them up one more time and that actually promotes them as well. So I think that's part of why uh, when you look at a promoted unit and Path of Radiance, not a pre-promote, like a regular promoted unit and Path of Radiance, like, holy crap, these stats are so big. Well, yeah, because you got a 20. Like, nothing wrong with that. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't think I mentioned it yet, actually, but Titania is good, by the way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was interested in a bunch of qualifiers, yeah, but let me, let me actually say, analysis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Titania good, <laughs> like, you you kind of covered it, like, she's a bit strong, I, I think I was like, oh, let me, let me offer some context here, and then I realized, oh, you want my opinion, yeah, she's good, Yeah. <laughs> who next? <laughs> I mean, if there's not, there's not much else to add, right, like, the rest of the playthrough will probably show why good, right, I guess. Uh, like there's some there's some like specifics to add, but I think it's we're gonna have so many enemy phases to talk about the details, right? That I think it's fine to just give a cursory overview like this if we really don't have much to add here, right? That's right. Okay. That's right. Okay. How about um, Boyd? Good old screen. Boyd. 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 Uh, I will put buttons one day, I swear. Mm -hmm. Good old Boyd. Uh, I said instantaneous analysis that I think Boyd is a little bit unpredictable sometimes, kind of like with Ike because this is not a game that I've played a hundred times, this is a game I've played maybe ten times, which there is a difference, trust me. And with Boyd especially, there's always a question of how much damage is he going to do, how much hit rate does he have, and does he double or get doubled, and all these things are question marks in my mind, because Boyd is not a unit I'm innately familiar with, which is why I want to use him, because I think it'll be interesting. But I can't guarantee survival if I'm going to try to use him, because like I said, all these question marks, they'll make it a little bit shaky. Now, I'm making it look like Boyd isn't very good, uh, because all these things sound like he's inconsistent. Uh, I do think he's good, especially as far as, like, foot units are concerned. Uh, his strength gets massive over the course of the game, and so does his HP, so... He has a reasonable cushion, and he also gets, like, the ability to dodge enemies somewhat reliably late in the game, or so I've been told. And his speed, it starts off in a bit of a hole, because the Iron Axe weighs him down a little bit. Uh, he has... Come on, game, give me the thing. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it weighs 10, so he's weighed down by 3 right now, uh, so he has 3 speed. He actually physically cannot double enemies, uh, but every time he grows strength, uh, this is mitigated by one more point, because strength is constitution in this game, compared to GBA, and his speed will also grow. He's like uh, 45 speed growth and 60 strength. Like, let me just read these on screen, how nice this is. Um, oh, yeah. So, he basically is he's very likely to get a point of speed in some way early on uh, when holding the Iron Axe, and as he's grown out, grown out of that speed hole, he'll start doubling pretty reliably. And that, I think, can make him suffer from success, which is what I'm a little bit afraid of, especially because his defense growth is a little bit low, and his bases as well. But hopefully he'll get through this game as a promoted warrior and destroy everything in sight with the hand axe. That's, that's what I'm hoping for. Um, or he can die horribly. I don't know. What do you think? To, yeah, as a, as a warrior, even as just a fighter with a few more levels under him, and Intellius axes are just by far the best weapon type. Like, by a lot. It's... It's, it's really not even close. And so Boyd having access to those does just make him a really fun unit. I have a ton of fun every time I train out Boyd. And I can definitely understand why someone would be turned off to Boyd of like, oh, but he doesn't have Kanto, he doesn't have this or that. Like, nah, come on, dude. Like, shut up, nerd. Like, it's Boyd. Look at him. So I, I do definitely agree that in the start, his stats are just, like, really terrible. But him having low strength, or him having low speed as a result of being weighed down by his weapon just means that for a short period of time he actually has a lot more room to grow and a lot more potential for improvement which means again if you just dig him out of this early speed hole uh you'll start to see you, you'll start to see some vastly better results there's a decent chance he gets like two as on a level up like th that's actually pretty immense and yeah aside from that like very fast unit very dodgy unit very bulky unit with his hp and pretty pretty likely to one round, I'd say. I don't really know much about hit rate issues in this one, but seeing as luck gives a whole point of accuracy and skill gives a whole two points of accuracy, I can't really imagine there being any hit rate issues with Boyd later on. So he's he, he's he's basically a fighter that doesn't have any of the late game weaknesses of the fighter. Like he uh -huh. doesn't have any of the hit rate issues. He doesn't have any of the speed issues, if I recall. Uh, but it's it's just this awkward early game that he has to deal with. Yes. Uh, two points I want to tack on real quick before I forget. Uh, one of these is the, the hit rate issues. I think it seems like it's bit. If I look at his base hit rate right now, it's 87, uh, which is before enemy avoid. Which in this game, I think it's usually like early on, it's going to be like five or ten max probably, uh, if that. Um, I think the other thing that kind of messes it up is his biorhythm. Right now, it's on slightly above neutral, and he has tempest, which doubles the effects of biorhythm. 
which basically means he gets, I think it's plus 5 or plus 10 uh, hit and avoid, and so do the enemies randomly, depending on where this little graph is, because every turn is going to slide over a little bit, uh, depending on what turn you are. Uh, so right now he's like up and it's going down, so he's going to get like worse as it goes on now, and it's going to get a little bit better as it goes on. That I think that inconsistency can be a little bit painful, and that's where the hit rate's reputation comes from at the fairly. So I'm not sure how deserved it is, uh, but that is an issue that he sometimes has. At some point you can remove Tempest, and these effects will be mitigated, uh, but that might be where it all comes from. Uh, oh, it'd be funny to keep it on, though. <laughs> the other thing... I mean, I might forget. The other thing I want to note real quick is you see this fighter band in his inventory. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, uh, and you've played this game, that's because this is also a New Game Plus feature. It um, it changes growth rates a little bit. To It buffs them a little bit by like 5 or 10% in two stats. I think the fighter band is one of the better ones. I think it gives... Uh, I, give, I think it's one of HP these... Strength. strength. Is, is speed strength? Uh, no, HP strength. Sorry. HP strength, okay. I was I was worried there. I was like, I'm pretty sure there's none that give both strength and speed. That's that They actually balance it pretty well. There's a couple of these, and you get them if you play the game for a second time, or, you know, third, etc. And they're pretty nice to have around. Not as good as, for example, the Night Ward, which you get later, but right now there's no reason to take them off. Uh, they do sell for quite a bit of money if you don't want them, so that's also really nice. We can we can make some more forges. Uh, if we that's right. Them. So And if nice. you... If you play it, I'd say don't don't tear your hair out over having the correct bands on it no. every time, all right? Like they're way worse than Thracia scrolls, and you didn't need to do that for Thracia scrolls. Like it's it, exactly. it's ten points of growth across two stats. Don't yeah. don't get too upset. It's like it's and one of those HP if it drops. Yeah, like, if you look at the growth on the side, they're plenty good, and Void has a lot of room to grow, for example. So don't worry, just keep them on whatever the way they are, and it's probably okay. Okay, uh, shall we move on to our last uh, candidate here? Uh, Move Bosker. on to our last unit. Yes. Bosker. Uh, the Bosker. Here. The Bosker. I like Oscar a lot in this unit still. Um, I used to like him a lot more than I do. Uh, and like to put this in the tier perspective, I used to think he was S tier. And now I think he's like a low A tier or a high B tier. So still good. Uh, just a little bit disappointing in the strength department. But almost everything else about Oscar is still really nice. Like he is a unit with Super Canto, just like Titania. He's able to rescue, drop trade, heal, and a move again. Uh, he does have okay stats to hold himself up. He's pretty bulky, especially. Um, 26 HP and 8 defensive base is good. And he also can use a Night Ward later on to get more bulk, uh, because it'll give him plus 2 defense and res. Uh, his speed is usually good enough to double, especially with the help of the aforementioned Night Ward, which we'll probably talk about when we get it. I'm mentioning it way too much already. Uh, the big problem for me with Oscar is just that he lacks the strength to two hit kill most enemies, and that can sometimes get a little bit strength screwed. Uh, but generally, Oscar is going to be able to contribute at the very least and maybe turn into something worth using long term. Uh, the other thing I'm looking out for with Oscar uh, is the fact that he has an Earth affinity, which means he'll, if you build support with Ike, for example, they'll get really, really dodgy, and that's going to be really helpful in the context of this playthrough where I won't know how much health people have, <laughs> so it'll be nice <laughs> to know if they're going to like just dodge a bunch of enemies. That's going to be really helpful. Uh, but the we'll elaborate on supports later on uh, when we do get them. But it's generally what I'm looking out for with, with Oscar. Just going to try to use him, set up kills for others, maybe steal some kills for himself. Uh, he'll be fun to use. Uh, but I'm also a little worried about him, because he's also, like, not sure how much damage this guy's going to do to this soldier, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, all these. I do say his offenses, I feel like, have a little bit of Ford Syndrome, where he's a couple points of yes, strength and exactly a couple points that. of speed behind. So, and the, the issue with, like, being behind in two two or more stats at once is that like you don't really catch up and turn online until you get a point in everything which is actually not very likely like you know you're gonna get you're gonna hit every you're gonna hit a few things and then you're gonna hit a few things again except you'll have some repeat stats and then there's just gonna be that one stat that won't won't raise up and i, I feel usually oscar's going to run into that with either strength or speed and I don't want to say this to completely disparage the unit. I think he's a lot of fun. I do use him a lot. I've, I started using him less and less, though. Mostly because, you know, I don't know, Boyd's kind of fun. You're absolutely right about his bulk. His defense is amazing. Like, that... I, I think if I really had to write home, be like... Like, you, you, you shook me awake. Like, what's Oscar good at? I'm like, oh, defenses, I guess. <laughs> like, he's really good at that. So, definitely... At the very least, he won't die. But... That's right. <laughs> Well, okay. That's the, that's the thing see. with the units like Oscar, right? I feel like if I think a unit is durable, I'm going to put him on the front lines, and that's where people usually die. That's what I'm afraid of with Oscar. Oh, true. Like with Ike, with Ike and Boyd, I'm going to be like a little bit careful, but Oscar, he can probably take it, and then he like crits an extra enemy and dies. Oh, no. 
If crit's an extra enemy, how much damage does that really do, though? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Shall we get started? Let's get started. Let's yeah. do a map. Let's get this here. Alright, so this map is pretty straightforward. Just a semi-tutorial map, I guess, just to deal with a bunch of enemies. I'm not I usually like to make a little choke point here to fend off the enemies. Uh, they're gonna burn oh, yeah. out one of the villages, but we can get the rest. Uh, I think Ike has his four iron swords right now, probably. So... They're playing the North American realm? I think so. I mean, the Nintendo PC, yes, but yeah. Uh, we can... If we... I think we attack here, and then if he dodges, he's pretty safe. If he doesn't dodge, you probably like rescue drop him backwards with Oscar, something like that. I think so. Dodge. Easy. Okay, now I think we can just leave here. Yeah. Fine. Just leave him. Leave him. Yeah. Do we occupy like one of the tiles so he doesn't get that turbo is surrounded? Or... I mean, That's a pretty good option to get him some peak speed, right? So if we just put him here, we just risk our Ike right here. It'll be fine. Okay, Merc is one guy. I don't want to put like Boyd here, because the Mermidon is pretty good against him, I think. Easy this. Well, we could, we could put Titania north and then have Boyd take on the fighter. Uh, like here? I see. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's uh, a pretty usual like play that. I do. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. I like that. Let's go here. Oh, I can't check the math. It's so relieving to just not have to check anything. I can just, I can just play. No. You just bunker. Uh, let's go here. I don't know. Uh, and turn. And uh, we'll see what happens. We'll let this bunch live. All these pillages. <sighs> well, oh, they actually do an attack command. Yeah, yeah. apparently. Alright, Titania's gonna merc this, this Mermidon. I think depending on the order, they might also assign it to Titania, actually. Oof. Hopefully the oh. fighter goes for Ike instead. The, the, I think so? I mean, okay, there's the Alpha Fighter. I'm hoping the fighter We're goes for one. Ike and then the brigand behind him goes for uh, Ike as well. Yeah, there we go. Okay, he's all good. Okay, there we go. Alright, we did it. You think maybe the Upper Fighter can reach Ike as well then? If he, like, crits an enemy or something. This one. Six move, I think? Yeah, I think, fi I think fighters have six. I can't check. Yeah, dude, do I, we I can check ranges, though. I can check ranges. That's Did we just immediately open ourselves up to a game over? Yeah, probably. Well, <laughs> because, right. he, because we knew he'd... Okay. Oh, where's my level up raisins? Give oh, it back. There Give you it go. back. <laughs> Give it where's back. Where's my stats, bro? <laughs> no. Where's my stats? Bro, I I swear to God, I've never seen as many empty level ups in any game besides Path of Radiance. This is the only game where it happens to me. I think it doesn't have the reroll function that the GBA games does. There's no way it has that. I, I asked a ROM hacker... Um, on Serenest Forest. Uh -huh. Th this was like two years ago, I think it was. I was like, alright, what is it? They say it rerolls once. Uh, <laughs> that's what I heard. And right. I think they offered some sources to back it up. I was like, I don't want any hearsay. Like, I want to know. <laughs> that's fair. Like, from someone who's actually looked at it. It rerolls once. <laughs> so, we got pretty unlucky there. That's funny that it only rerolls once. I feel like that's the difference between reroll one and reroll two. Twice in in, some, in something where like it isn't even all that likely to happen to begin with, I don't think that is something that a human can tell by just like playing. That's something that just I feel like it happens yeah, more no often way. than it should in this game. But that's something that like that's definitely confirmation bias when it happens. Mm -hmm. Ugh, I live. Ugh. 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 I live. I live. I thought it was Boyd again. I was like, what the hell? Where's Boyd? Yeah. And Boyd is coming eventually. Oh, we can't doing? tell friend from foe. It was such chaotic warfare. Yeah, I'm just gonna work that guy. There you go. I think the guy just stands still and does nothing if you don't get this village or something. I don't remember what he does. I'm just gonna kill him. I'm gonna save this village. You don't do it. Show off the gonna amazing sprite. That's true. <laughs> well, we saw this in the uh, intro cutscene, right? Oh, that's true. The intro cutscene in this game is also so good. Beautiful. There you go. Get that We're getting a whole XP. 1 XP. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 98 more of those, we got a level. Four, five, six. I'm just gonna go here. I ain't in no hurry. Let's go to here. Let's use another board kill. I don't remember what HP he's at, but we can tell when he's in battle. That's right. Alright, 22. Just don't get attacked twice. Easy. We get stacked up by the merms. I don't know, yeah. But what merms? I think? Oh, yeah, we already took them out. I think, yeah, I think they're one merm. We had this one here, but like, we can't reach us. Uh, can you reach us? Yeah, it can be well, that's his count. I think originally, Raisins, when he did the challenge run, he's like, yeah, you don't check ranges, but, you know, I was like, nah, I mean, I'm gonna check ranges. You, you can't stop me. <laughs> you can't stop me. You can't tell me what to do. Let's have Oscar get in a fight, man. Come on. Yeah, he, he's, he's working on it. I think they'll go for him, because he's going to try trying to disadvantage. I think so. They have that priority. <clears throat> Come on, Ike. All right, Ike is at full HP. Gotta remember. That fighter's low. Is that low. chip damage? 
Right, this, is, this is good practice. Oh, he's going for the village. Ooh, that's, that's a mistake, my man. Alright, I'm gonna feed you the boy. Hit All him. the XP to play. Yeah. Mm. We're gonna get a warrior, his unique class. There's no other warriors in this game, is there? It's just Largo no. the Berserker, yeah. Right. Yeah, we did get a Berserker. Mm -hmm. pretty cool. I definitely want to use Largo as well, he seems so fun. Oh, he's so fun. I think the speedrun actually uses him. I, I don't think this guy's at low HP, actually. We haven't fought him yet, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think so either. Can I don't oh, know, no. but that's what I think. <laughs> that's the opposite. The opposite of low HP. I find this really entertaining, actually. Playing it like this. It's like, uh, I don't think I fought this guy. Okay, I think Oscar can canter in range of the Merm. And I might just like get if the we to and just like canter range the boss. Oh wait, we like, killed him? Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah. All that tall we were like, Oscar's offenses are trash. I mean, nah, bro. The enemies early on are also trash, so they're, they're kind of even there. Ah, uh, fair. Oh, I can't reach, unfortunate. I'll just get it next turn, I guess. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this so that the Mermaid's forced to attack Oscar. I don't remember what the Bex limit for this chapter is. is it like, I think it's pretty tight, actually. It's like four. But four turns. This game is like pretty uh, nice. Really? That has to be like an 80 hit. Come on. That's no way that he high. used that. Bio? He was that like lowest bio when we did the evaluation, right? Probably. I don't know. I don't I remember. So. I mean, there's no way that Boyd is hitting yeah, this guy. It happens twice. Yeah, it's gonna go for I. I think Oscar plus Ike is probably a kill on this guy. I think. Okay. Oh yeah, no, come on. Bro, okay. Look at that defenses. He's got like two defense. Mm -hmm. All right, we need an actual level up this time. Yeah. Oh. I can't believe I got an empty level up on Ike. My, my last couple Ikes have been really blessed, so honestly, it's really fair. Like, the universe balanced itself out. Perfectly That's true. balanced, as all things should be. Be good here. Oh, another one. How nice. Like, oh, this card another Iron Sword. I forgot this guy. Thank I you. A weapon. I guess... It, oh, that's another annoying thing. Oh, no. I lose so many weapons like that. Okay, can't anyway. check the invent. <laughs> Uh, I like just killing this boss with Titania. Like, you can wear him down, but you can also give Max Bex if you kill him quickly, so... I think Steel Axe does kill the boss. Uh, it, oh, this one does, never mind. kills the boss. <laughs> yep. I think okay, Iron well. kills the boss more often than Steel Axe does. Settles that debate. Yeah. <laughs> boss owned with facts and logic. I was on the wrong. Yeah. I think I think generally killing boss with Titania is good because for units most units it gives like overkill XP where it's like they would have gotten 120 for example, uh, but Titania <laughs> makes full use of the extra bonus experience. They were the real XP thieves all along. Mm -hmm. I can check inventories with the trait menu. How OP. Uh, what if I give my rope to Boyd to make sure he doesn't die? Oh, that's fun. I, I don't think I've ever done that. It seems like it seems really dumb honestly because it's gonna max it in the end, but it'll yeah. keep him alive. It's it's the kind of thing where like I think you want the robe on the unit with the low HP and you want the Draco shield on the unit with like high defense and whatnot. Yeah. But I'll just give the first Draco shield to him. I'll just give the rope to Ike. I think he needs it more. Uh, let's see. I need to seize this turn though. I'll just make sure he has it next turn. I want to take an axe off of Titania before she uh, has to drop more. Because I think next chapter you get a lot of drop of items. So I think this is why. That's right. I do know that Robe on Ike is usually pretty good. His expectation is like literally seven under his cap for yeah. both tier one and tier two. So yeah, that and you know the whole game over thing. So maybe can just fall oh, well. I forgot about that part honestly. I think one of you is actually fall. Uh, Oscar? Question mark? No, no, not really. Yeah, I'm actually kind of low on foams. So we'll, we'll get a portable one next chapter, so it's, it's okay. That's right. <laughs> we we didn't hoard enough foams, so. <laughs> oh, you made me turn off the turn counter too. I don't know what turn it is. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, we're seizing on turn question mark question mark. We will know it. We'll never know. <laughs> we get a Bex display though, I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we got 180. I don't know what that means. Did we do? Well, it took, dude, it took you 180 turns, bro. <laughs> That's probably. What are you doing? Training support. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the, the more turns you take, the more Bex you get. I think so. I think so. You were right. That is how it works, right? All right, that's fair. It's got to be how it works. Well. That was chapter one. <laughs> <laughs> this game is so weird like this. Uh, I think next chapter is going to be hellish because it's going to be more forced combat for all of our uh, units until Titania rejoins. Yeah. That's going to be really the difficult. Enemies, the enemies kind of like come right at you. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I guess to, to close it out real quick, I plan to upload these uh, once or twice a week alongside my three hopes. Let's play that will probably start before this video goes live. 
Uh, there will in fact probably be a delay between when I post these, when I make these and when I post these for that reason. So if you make a comment and I haven't like taken it into account in an episode next time, that's probably why. Uh, we'll let you know when we're actually starting to upload these uh, so you know just how, much, how big the delay is. But thanks for all the comments and uh, I get in advance. And uh, Raisins, thank you for joining me once again for another fun adventure. And Absolutely. We'll see you next time. We'll see you next time.